Hi there, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I was looking through my collection and thinking, okay, I have all these palettes that I have that I haven't tried yet or that I've swatched quickly and used a few times and then kind of stashed them away and forgot about them. And how sad is that, right? I'm like, you have this beautiful makeup, use it. And the way to really understand a palette is to actually get in there and see what it's about. So what I have decided to do is take one palette and use it for a full week, sometimes a little less, sometimes maybe more possible. So I do between five and eight days, maybe five and nine days depending, but I do like to try other collections. So I'm going to try to get that many looks, even though if it isn't that many consecutive days it'll give me a general idea of how the collection works because what's the point of having it if you're really not going to explore it what I'm going to do is be doing this mostly with permanent collections because with the limited edition they move so quickly and there's so many of them now that it just wouldn't make sense so this is going to be for palettes that are permanent and that way you can decide if you want them or not because you may have heard of a lot of these and you're like is it worth it is it not well i'm gonna tell you so <laughs> the first one i'm going to start with is very popular everybody i think owns it it's one of the Too faced chocolate palettes yes i had had this since i think december or january and i swatched it and then i used it briefly a couple times and then i put it away and went i'm going to use this come spring and summer summer is here baby and so i pulled this one out first now the reason why i pulled this one out is because this palette is just perfect for this time of year it is if you look at it it is just the perfect palette for summer and for spring because there's a lot of light colors and a lot of darker colors that would work in the crease. It's just a summer girl's dream. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm starting with this one. And I think I wore it about seven to eight times. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is start with the two larger ones. And it's Satin Sheets and Divinity. Now this is the matte and this is the shimmer and these are really good for the all over eye look prepping it before you put other colors on and I just want to show what those look like and here you go so to start with satin sheets satin sheets is like a warm kind of beigey color shimmer and I use this one I would say most of the time because it's very user friendly, it goes onto the eye, it mixes very well with some of these other colors. It's just so easy to work with, you know, you can add in the corner some color and move on. So Satin Sheets is the perfect kind of base color. Um, what I will say is that there were some issues with it in that it never hit a full shimmer. It was almost like a semi shimmer, even if I tried to build it up and I just learned to love and accept it for who it was and move on. With um, Divinity, I did use this across my eyes every single time to prep it before adding the other colors. It is very semi-sheer. It is not a full coverage type of um, matte color. So just be wary of that. It did work well at prepping it, but I like to do a full prep eye and, and this is kind of a semi. Just so you know in case you, you prefer a little bit more bold white setting color. So now I'm going to move on to the first row, and it's Almond Truffle, Cashew Chew, and Dark Truffle. Now the first two are mattes. And as you can see, they're really, really light. So it's kind of hard to see, especially Cashew Chew, which is one of my absolute favorites, just looking at the palette. Oops, and Dark Truffle, sorry, interrupted that. Hold that thought. So that one, which is Cashew Chew, which I will show to you. So going back to Cashew Chew, which is this color, it is one of my absolute favorites. Um, I know it's really light and I just had some problems with it showing up and I think part of it is because it matches my skin tone too much. So I don't know if it's Cashew Chew's fault as much as it is that there's just, we're too similar. And sometimes opposites attract. So just, you know, be wary of that. 
Um, and then I'm also going to put down cotton candy and uh, pecan praline. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. So there you go. So they're really, really beautiful colors. Um, what I will say is that with pecan praline, there were some issues with this one because it really is quite a beautiful crease color. Yes, it still is on the light side, but I felt that when I tried to work it, it would completely dissipate. I mean, you can definitely see it, but it would disappear the more you used it or put other, other colors on top of it. But to be fair, it is a very light color. But what I will say is that it wasn't as pigmented as I would have liked. I really did like cotton candy. It really is a beautiful, almost semi-shimmer. It is an absolutely beautiful color. And if you're afraid of pink, because it's maybe too much, this is a really user-friendly pink that just adds a pop and people will be staring at you going, whoa. So now I'm going to move on to the next five and there's Cafe Au Lait. And then there is Totally Fetch, which is this crazy pink color here. And I mean that in a good way. And then Sprinkles, which is kind of this warm pink right here. So I'm gonna start with these three. Here's Fetch, totally Fetch. Look at that. I know, <laughs> I know. When you're like, I can't see it. I'm wiping my fingers. Um, totally Fetch is the pink that I was warning people about. This is the pink that is going to get attention. And just be wary that this one does stain a little bit. Um, it, it, it stays on your finger. I have used it. In fact, I'm wearing it today. I'm using it very lightly because like I said, it is a very bold color. So I'm using it in the corner, a little bit under the eye and a little bit in the inner corner. Just a little hint. <laughs> I didn't want to go full on because again, I have a life and I had to do things and people would be going in a good way though because it's absolutely fabulous color. <laughs> so it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. What I will say too is that I love Cafe Alley, which is this beautiful color here. But what I will say between Cafe Alley and um, Pecan Praline is that they're a little deceptive in that they look like they're these gray tones, but when you use them, they actually go on. Even on the fingertips, they look more gray. But when you use them next to each other, you'll see they come off more tan and beige, which I was a little bit disappointed in because you can see there are these beautiful gray colors. And I love these beautiful silver grayish colors because they're perfect for cool tone girls. And I get excited by them. And though I think they're absolutely beautiful colors, they do come off a little bit brown, which is not the look that I was going for. So though they're still lovely colors and they are still lovely colors they do look a little bit more beige brown than the silver and gray that i was looking for so just be wary of that if that if you're looking for good grays so now i'm going to add these two dark colors this is bordeaux and earl gray and there we go so I'm gonna be honest, I wore Earl Grey briefly around the house just to see how well it wore. And it's kind of like this dark navy um, matte color, but I will say, it, you can see it is like this, this navy color, but it almost comes across, um, like in the palette, it's this beautiful, almost like dark navy teal color, that, if that even makes sense. But it's like this dark, dark teal color. It's just absolutely beautiful. When you use it, like you see here, it becomes more of a gray blue than the true color that I was looking for here. So it is a little bit deceptive and I was a little bit disappointed because that is a gorgeous color, but it does kind of do that gray, that gray color that sometimes comes with um, eyeshadows and you're like, oh. Yeah, so that's what happened with Earl Grey, unfortunately. Um, Bordeaux is absolutely fabulous for the outer V or even under your eye. It is absolutely perfect along with um, Dark Truffle. But Dark Truffle is a little bit dark for me, but Bordeaux is absolutely fabulous. And what I like is they, they have enough varying browns 
for crease colors or for the inner V for women all across the spectrum when it comes to skin tones, which I think is absolutely awesome and absolutely smart. Okay, so I am going to finish up with the last four, these guys right here. This is molasses chip, this is mocha, this is malted, and this is black currant, the purple of the palette. And I'm gonna go in a little bit more with molasses chip because there's really, it's not showing up as well as I would like. There we go. So, which one was that? That is Mocha. Mocha is looking a little bit anemic there. Okay, so these are the four here, the last. And you can see it's mostly the browns of, of some sort going on here. But that was one of the confusing things also, was molasses chip is like this beautiful, this beautiful brown color. It's like this semi-shimmer, just gorgeous kind of, almost neutral brown, I, I just love it. And then when you put it on, it becomes almost this peachy beige color, which is a little bit deceptive compared to what it looks like in the palette. So I was disappointed in that. The other one I had a little bit of problem was with was black currant. Now I was in love with this color because I love a good purple, but if you look here, it looks like it's the semi shimmer, but once you put it on, it's very much a matte. The other problem I had was that I really wanted to do a pop of purple on the corner one day. So what I did was I took um, satin sheets, which was just the standard kind of lid color that you can use. It's very user friendly and then you could add the pop of color around it. So I took black currant and I put it into the corner V along with um, almond truffle in the crease. I kind of wanted to head in that you know spectrum. And what happened was black currant ended up becoming almost that gray uh, brown color that sometimes happens. It started happening with it and it does look more purple here, but when it was mixed, with satin sheets, it became brown, that brownish gray kind of color, which worked in the end because I put it in the outer V, but it didn't put that pop of purple that I was looking for, but rather a brownish color. So I was a little bit disappointed because that was not the look that I was going for. Also, which I don't know if you can see, I'm already almost halfway through this and I have not used it that often. It's because when you use it, 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 it breaks apart almost. There's not a lot of fallout per se, but it just, when you use your brush or your finger, a lot comes off on it, and then there you go. So half the product's already on my arm. It's just very, very soft, and just doesn't chunk out, but a lot of it, a lot of the product comes off onto your brush or onto your finger. So just be wary of that. I mean, everything else is pretty much full, but I'm already halfway through Black Current and I only used it three or four times since I've had it, plus a couple swatches. So that was a little disappointing. What I will say is that um, there's a lot of great options for crease color because I feel like Almond Truffle, I tried to use along with, um, the uh, pecan praline. I try to use these for crease color because I, I am very pale. And unfortunately it didn't work as well as I would like because once I tried to work it in, which you can see here, they start to fade a little bit. And they are light to begin with, so maybe they aren't the smartest crease color. So I feel like I had to go up to something a little bit darker because I do feel when you work these colors, they do lighten up a bit. So I used mocha quite a bit, which normally I think would be too dark for a crease color if I'm going for a light daytime look. But what I found is you put it here and you work it in with your brush and it actually works really well. Yeah, so don't be afraid to go a color or two darker and work it into your crease because it will definitely work because these do fade a little bit while you're working them in. That being said, this isn't necessarily the most pigmented palette. So especially with the lighter colors, I find that they definitely aren't as pigmented as I would like. So you are going to have to take a few swipes to build up the color. So you will be using a little bit more product on those lighter colors, especially here, these five here, and even sprinkles here in the corner, um, along with Divinity and Satin Sheets. 
they, you know, you're going to have to build them up a little bit because the pigment isn't there. Now with the darker colors, these ones here and this guy here, that's not going to be the case. It really isn't. You can see here, they show up really well. Also, the shimmers are not full on shimmers. It's almost like the semi shimmer, even with satin sheets, it's kind of like this, um, satin like satin kind of shimmer look to it it looks a lot more shimmery in the palette along with cafe au lait and sprinkles than it does when you actually put it onto your eye so it's going to be more of a semi shimmer that will not build up to a full shimmer just so you know um also with divinity as i said it never builds up fully across the eye it's very light dusting so again the pigmentation on those lighter colors are a little bit uh Yes, but the dark colors definitely make up for that. They really do. A big shout out to um, Totally Fetch. This is a color I seriously didn't think I would be able to wear. I was a little bit like, ooh, I absolutely love it. And it's one of my favorites in the palette. And like I said, I'm wearing it today. The nice thing about it is you can go with a really bold color with it, or you can take it and do a very, very light color. Just go lightly with your brush, and it's very, very wearable, or you can really go for it <laughs> and really go for a bright look. And that's what I love about that col this color. Is, it's totally fetch is what it's called, is that it's really workable. It's probably one of the most workable, even though I think it's one of the most intimidating colors to most, but you can make it work for sure. I did. And what, it, what I will say is a lot of the shimmers are very, very soft. They're very, very soft. So when you, even when you swatch them and use the br your brush, they're very soft as far as a consistency. Totally Fetch is actually has a grainy feel to it. So if you put your finger in it, it is, is really grainy. And it's the only really grainy one of the palette. But the thing is, even though the consistency is not as smooth and nice as I would like, it actually performs the best. It really does. So I'm gonna go on to that actually. As far as performance goes for this palette, the shimmers for me did not last that long. They would last between three and four hours before they started to fade or turn darker from picking up the oil on my eyes. Now this is not uncommon, I have really oily skin. And what happens is when I use certain eyeshadows, even after I prep it, and I'll put how I prep my eye in the description box, when I prep my eye, some, that's the true test because some eyeshadows will stay all day and then other ones do not tend to. And with this palette, the shimmers started to fade. There was no shimmer left three to four hours in and it does absorb the oil. So it does look three to four shades darker because the oil has absorbed into the shadow. Now with the more matte colors, this was not the case. They lasted about four to five hours before you could definitely see that it was starting to fade away and get oily looking. The true exception of this was again, totally fetch. This thing, <laughs> this thing will last. If the world ends, totally fetch and cockroaches will be here, <laughs> ruling the earth. But the difference is totally fetch is wonderful and beautiful, unlike the other item <laughs> listed. It's absolutely gorgeous and it really was the best performing, even though the consistency wasn't very smooth. It's amazing. It really has amazing lasting time, and I had no problem with oil on that one, so if I just wanted to go for a pure pink look for the rest of my days, this would be the color. Um, but that being said, I still felt like, you know, it's definitely a beautiful palette. It's still, like, this is, that's some of the pros of this palette. It's just, it's perfect for this time of year, and I think it suits so many different skin tones. It really does. It has beautiful colors. It's gonna suit many different people. Perfect for summer and spring. If you have oily skin like I do, it may be a little bit harder sell. Just know that because they don't last as long as other brands. And here's the thing, I do have other products from Too Faced and I do feel that this isn't the first time that this, this has happened for me. I just don't have the best luck with their palette on my eye for whatever reason. It just doesn't last as long as some other shadows for me before it just starts, the oil starts taking over. So 
that probably won't be a problem if you have dry skin or if you have combination skin but if you are an oily skin person like me you may have problems so just be wary you know is it worth the price tag if it's only going to last three to six hours you know that's something that you're going to have to decide now maybe you found a way to make it work for you with oily skin and i say kudos thumbs up because i wish i was you because i just cannot figure it out i tried five different primers different foundation i've tried everything for some reason too faced doesn't always agree with my chemistry but that doesn't mean that it's a bad product it just means that it doesn't always behave well with me so yes would i buy it again do i love it I don't know if I'd buy it again only because of my skin issues and it wearing away, but do I love this palette? I do. I have love for it and yet I have some hesitations, but I still think all in all it's a really solid palette due to the colors and the colors that do work really well. There are a few that were a little wah wah, but that's with any palette. Um, oh, one other thing, there is a scent. I think everyone knows this with the chocolate bars. They do have a scent. Bon Bon collection is no exception. It does have that smell of chocolate to it, which I love, but it is not overwhelming. You know, it is on your eyes, so you're not going to smell it as much, but um, it does dissipate after a time, and then you can move on. I, I really didn't find it distracting, and actually while I was putting it on, there was a little bit of fallout, and I tasted it. <laughs> it tastes really good, too, though I don't recommend eating it. I didn't mean to. It just, I was like, oh. So there is a little bit of fallout, um, not a lot. I mean, mostly it was with some of the mattes, like um, Mocha and um, Malted. These two did have some fallout along with Bordeaux, but honestly, it wasn't that bad of a cleanup. It wasn't like horrible where it was all across the cheek line. So it wasn't that bad and there was some fallout in the palette, but it didn't go onto the cheek. So, uh, you know, <sighs> If you don't have oily skin, I think this would be a great palette for you. If you have oily skin, you may have some issues, but I do, I do like the palette. I do. So it's kind of a, you know, if this is average, no, yes. It's kind of a here, just because of some of the issues I had in a couple of the non-performing colors that I was looking forward to, but that's with any palette. So that is my review today on Too Faced Chocolate Bon Bon's palette. Let me know if you've had any luck, um, how you made it work, how you feel about it, what your favorite colors were, because I would love to hear, especially if you've had success with it. And I will be doing a new palette here in the next week or two. I haven't chosen from here on out. I will choose a palette and then tell you at the end of the video, but I hadn't thought that far yet. I know, I apologize. But, um, so look for my next one, where we try this for a week. And until next time, have a fabulous evening. Bye.